Welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to create this chromatic glitch effect. This effect can be applied to logos, text, and shapes. You can even use 3D objects. This effect is straight out of the box from After Effects, so there's no need for any additional plugins. Let's begin. So now we're in After Effects, let's create a new composition. So for this, I'm using uh, just a square, so 1080 by 1080, and set it to 10 seconds. This composition will act as our base layer, so we'll be putting whatever design work in. For this tutorial, I'm gonna just be using a simple letter. So for instance, this is just gonna be an S, so find a font you like. Um, I'm going with Euro style and changing it up to match the composition scale. So I'm just gonna size it up to be quite big so it takes up majority of the comp size. For this effect, I'm gonna be using a stroke instead of a solid fill just to make it stand out. Uh, once you've got your text sorted, uh, just align it centrally so it fits nicely in the artboard and maybe size up the stroke to make sure it matches the scale of the text. Okay, so next we're going to turn our text layer into a 3D object, which will enable us to rotate in 3D space. So we need to rotate it on the Y axis. Firstly, place a keyframe on the Y axis at around 15 frames, and then again towards the end of the comp. The second keyframe must be a negative value if you want it to rotate counterclockwise. The second keyframe is really dependent on how fast you want your animation to go. So if you want it slightly longer, it'd be better to put more rotations. And if you want it to be more short and snappy, it would be um, around five at a closer range. The best result is really experimenting with the values for your own design. Next, we're going to select both keyframes and press F9 to easy ease them. This will allow us to edit the speed in the graph editor. By clicking on the first keyframe, we're able to drag the handle out and create more of a gradual incline in speed. As you can see, the speed is more gradual as it sweeps in and it almost becomes like a helicopter effect once it reaches the height. I think this is a bit too fast, so I'm gonna drag the keyframes in and uh, reduce the actual value. So this way, it means that you get a slightly uh, lesser rotation um, and it will mean that we have a shorter animation So again, I'm just changing the values just to make it a little bit more snappy. Okay, I'm just gonna just move my timeline down as we're going to be creating um, a new comp. So where this is our base, uh, it'd just be best to name it. Okay, so the next step is to create a new composition. So we're gonna use the same settings as before. Uh, this one, we're just gonna quickly change the name to texture. Okay, so we need to add in a new solid. This will just be to act as a background. And we're going to add an effect called gradient ramp. This creates a gradient on an object. So we just need to make sure that the top is the black and the bottom is the white. We're going to use another effect called posterize, which creates banding within the object or shape that you're using. Once you play with the settings, you'll find an area that you like. So for this one, I'm using around 40, but then again, it depends on the actual comp size you're working with. We're going to create another composition. This will be called the stack, as we're going to be merging both the texture and the uh, base shape. Okay, next, drag and drop the shape comp and the texture comp into the new composition. Turn off the texture comp and add on the shape composition a new effect called time displacement. The time displacement effect actually uses a source input and displaces time accordingly. So for this, we're going to set the first input layer to the texture so that it creates this sort of staggered effect. So as you can see, as the text is rotating, it sort of gives this 3D effect, even though it's done entirely in 2D. So as you can see, the actual gaps are slightly different. Uh, they are created procedurally through the texture. Uh, the next step is to create the final composition. This is where we add the chromatic abrasion. 
Uh, so using the same settings as before. Uh, drag in the stacked composition and duplicate it. So we have three in total. Uh, we need to change the blending modes on the top two layers to be screen, as we're going to be adding an effect to all the layers. Now over in the uh, effects panel, we're going to be looking for an effect called shift channels. Drag that onto uh, the top one and change the settings to be all fall off apart from red. We're then going to do the same for the next two, but going in the order of RGB. So for the second one, it'll be green and the bottom one being blue. As you can see, it turns the S back to a white color. Um, we're going to offset them slightly by a frame. So when you press space, we get something interesting. So as there's slight displacements in the time as well as the offsetting of the layers, it creates this uh, rainbow colored effect, which joins together to create the full white uh, outline. Uh, we're gonna quickly save this as I'm going to show you how to change some of these settings. Back in the shapes composition, we're going to be changing the uh, image, but without removing the rotation. Uh, we're going to just bring in an image of our logo that we're going to use, and we're going to parent it to the uh, text layer so we can still keep the rotation. Uh, just make sure you turn on the, the 3D settings to turn it into a 3D object. Next, if you go back to the final composition, you will notice that it automatically updates as this is all done procedurally. The displacements do look a bit different as it's taking only a section of the uh, texture. One idea would be to try and shrink it, but the effect doesn't actually work like that. You have to go back to the original texture and change the mapping. So now inside the texture, we just need to change the actual start point and the end point for the gradient. Just estimate roughly where your logo will be. And then when you turn back onto the main comp and turn off all the other layers, it should translate with more gradual inclines and creates a way more interesting effect. We can also do the same effect using 3D objects. So I've created a 3D spinning wheel within Blender. This um, can be dragged in as a PNG sequence and we can use the exact same effects. Uh, just scale it down to match um, the size you're working with. Just remember to reset the actual texture value from uh, so that it takes the whole screen. As you can see from the 3D outlook, it looks really cool, but there is this weird uh, gradient fade. Uh, this is just where the PNG sequence actually ends before the comp side is over. So unless you actually want that effect, um, you can actually fix it by going into the original shape composition and making it loop forever. So if you enable time remapping um, and then alt click on the stopwatch, you can insert loop out expression, which means that it will consistently loop the same animation um, until the composition ends. So when we press space, it creates that nice looping effect. Here are the final outcomes from today's tutorial. Hopefully you found this effect useful. Please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps the channel out. Thanks.